welcome today's yoga short with me, Anne. Today we're going to be exploring a high runner's lunge and all modifications that I've come up with that you can do for this pose. So for the month of July, I'm exploring various poses that you'll find in a typical Hatha class, which is a style of yoga that I teach. And then I'm giving you alternatives and there are many ways to practice poses. I am showing you alternatives that make the pose more accessible depending on if something's happening just today in your body or if it's a regular recurring thing. Sometimes the pose just doesn't feel right in your body and it could just be for that day. And so you have options, you can always change it up. So we'll first start with me talking you through setting up a typical runner's lunge. And there's many ways to come into this pose. I think we'll set up from a tabletop. That'll probably be the easiest option of setup, but you could come from a downward dog you could step back from Tadasana, mountain pose. There's a lot of options of how to come into this pose. And it kind of just depends on the flow of the class that you may be attending. But we'll start from tabletop. And I do have a blanket here because one of the alternatives is to have your knees down on your mat. And so I think I'll actually put it now down in the middle of my mat because it's just easier to maneuver it. So if you do have sensitive knees being in tabletop, it can be nice to have a towel or a blanket. Oh, and I forgot to mention what we're going to use today. You're welcome to watch this and then try out the different options. Um, we'll need two blocks. If you have them, if you don't, there are options for that. You could also use a piece of furniture, a stool, something like that. Something for padding for knees, whether a bl blanket that folds well or a towel. A wall is nice to help support you in this pose. And then I also have a folding chair. And if you don't have a folding chair, a coffee table, a dresser, the wall works as well. I'm just giving you all these various options. So we'll start in our tabletop, just here for a moment, but quick alignment, knees below hips and have your wrists below your shoulders. And so for a lot of us, transitioning into a pose like this can be difficult. So it can be easier to do it from tabletop. So step your right foot forward and it might get stuck, right? And so this is not a good safe lunge. My knee is way over my heel and ankle. And so you might just crawl your toes forward. Maybe that's not accessible. So you can just grab onto your ankle and bring it forward. And you want to check in that your knee is right over your heel. One of the options is to keep your knee down, but we're going to set up for a typical high runner's lunge. So you curl your toes under and lift your back leg up. You may have to adjust, making sure your knee stays right over your heel. Reaching through your back heel, that back leg is strong and straight. A lot of people can't reach the mat, so we have options for that. This is just too much. Your knee comes down to your mat. You can keep your back toes curled under or bring the top of your foot to connect with your mat. You want to make sure that your spine is long. So if you are having a hard time, that's where props come in place. So you're welcome to, if you have blocks, I know not everyone has blocks, they have three heights. So I'll do, um, let me do the lunge, the high lunge on the three sets of blocks. And you just kind of see, you'll see my torso change a little bit. It changes the pose slightly in my body. You see my torso get uh, more higher up, but my torso stays long in whatever position I'm in. And that's also an option. You want to make sure this isn't happening either. You also have the option to bring your hands to your thigh. I'm gonna bring my hands back down to my block and bring my knee down. And then we also have those options. Toes can be curled under or the top of your foot on your mat. Many heights here for your blocks. Whoop, I missed one. Highest height. And then coming on to hands on your thighs, especially if you don't have any props or the blocks are too far away. So those are some options. I'm gonna turn and do um, some of the options with the other leg. I'm not gonna do all options on both sides, but know that if you do one side, you need to complete the other side as well. Let me just turn. Actually, I'm gonna get a sip of water first. Make sure you stay hydrated. I'm going to move my blanket out of the way. So the next option, 
for a lunge. I'm just going to step back up into my high runner's lunge. I'm going to come up to my hand on my thigh. And then I'm going to bring my back foot a little bit forward. I bring my whole foot down to the mat. So this is warrior one legs. This might just be more accessible for you. It might be really difficult to have that back heel off the mat. If you absolutely can't do it, then you bring your foot down. But it's a different pose. So know that a little bit different action is happening in the body. Still both beneficial for your body. So you have that option. I'm going to come back to my high lunge with my torso upright. You also have the option ooh, to widen your stance. So maybe you want to be higher up. The teacher might be teaching a lunge with your, with your body more upright. There's variations of these poses. So I moved my back leg and foot a little farther out, so I widened my stance. That gives you a better uh, stance, a stronger stance, wider, helps to make you feel a little more grounded. You also have the option to bring this back foot forward. When you do that, you have to make sure that your knee does not go forward of your heel and ankle. So you might have to adjust. Maybe if you bring your back foot forward, that happens. And so you've got to adjust. And then checking in that your shoulders are right above your hips. That's in all your uh, lunge poses. So I'm going to step my foot forward. We're going to do some options with the wall. So a great option is just to have your hands on the wall to give you support. So that would be if you're a little bit higher up. If you check in that your knee is over your heel, you know, your hands can be right at your shoulders or even higher up, depending if you're doing more of a lunge with your arms up by your ears, perhaps bringing your fingertips onto the wall and crawling them up is helpful. So there's an option. And also use your block. So I taught this with uh, warrior, the, excuse me, the yoga short that I did on Warrior Two. We also use the wall as support, as variations of the pose. And it's basically the same thing with the block. So you're gonna put the block under your knee. So to make sure it's not on your knee, it's gonna be on your shin. You're gonna press your block into your shin, your shin into your block, pressing that into the wall. So that's an option. You might have to adjust your stance and all that. And what I didn't mention earlier, I will when I set up again at the end of the um, pose, is that your both sets of toes are facing in the same direction. So like warrior one, your toes are a little bit out. They're pretty well turned in. But when you're in a lunge, your heel is off the mat, the ball of your foot is on the mat, and your toes, your back toes, are facing the same direction as your front toes. So as I come here, I've got to maneuver a little bit so that my block stays pressed into my shin and into the wall. And then my knee is right over my heel. I've got that pressing energy to help lift me up. I'm going to adjust my back foot. And then, you know, maybe I'm super close to this wall, but you could have your arms up. You could have your hands at your wall higher up. You could have your hands at shoulder height. So that's an option as well. And that'll help you to get a little more strength. So if you feel a little tippy, this is a good way to practice the pose. I'll come back up. A chair is also good support. And if you don't have a chair that would work like a dining room table or, or dining room table chair, um, if you don't happen to have a folding chair, a coffee table can work, a dresser, something like that, the wall. So we use this for, um, Standing forward fold, we used it for the downward facing dog video. And so you'll start with your hands right at the edge of the seat, as wide as you can, unless it happens to be a really wide seat. So about shoulder width apart. I'll keep one foot forward and I'm gonna step the other one back. So same idea, making sure your knee is right over your heel. This back leg is strong and straight. Both sets of toes are facing forward. I'm pressing through my back heel. You know, maybe this helps to get you set up that you can come to here or here or stay right here. Maybe this is too much and so you need to back up. So you've got to be careful with that knee, right? And that might mean this foot comes forward. It might mean that your knee backs up. You could also bring your heel down. That is an option as well. Set the chair aside. And we'll come down and do a lying down version of lunge. 
So I like to have padding under my head. I'm going to hydrate. <clears throat> Come to lie down in constructive rest. Make sure that your base of your skull is supported and your neck has some free range here that doesn't feel like it's pressing into anything. And just hug a knee into your chest. And this might be enough for you today. So if you're familiar with happy baby, this is going to be half happy baby. So the goal is to bring your foot so that it's fairly parallel to the ceiling. Your knee is bent and you're bringing your knee toward the outside of that same shoulder the best you can. So my hamstrings are really tight, so it doesn't go very far. So if you have accessibility, you can hold on to the outside of your foot. Maybe that's too far away, too much of a strain. You can hold on the back of your calf, even the back of your thigh, even at your knee. So check in there. And then this other knee can stay bent, or you could extend that leg out long. It's more intense that way. That leg strong and straight, so pressing through either your heel or the ball of your foot. This foot is active. I'm pressing through all four corners of both feet. That might not be an option for you when pressing through the ball of your foot or feet. Maybe more accessible. I'm going to bend my extended leg. I'm going to hug my knee into my chest, my other knee, rock a little side to side. And I'm going to roll over, come on up, and I'll set up one more time for a high lunge. I'll do it on the other side. Remembering you have all the options, the blocks at any height, support under your knee if you choose to um, set it down. And I think I'm going to set up for my high lunge, coming from a standing position just to try something different. So I'm going to ground through my standing leg, my front leg, as I step my other foot back. So I come here, get adjusted, pressing through my heel, both sets of toes are facing forward, and then I'll start to bring my hands down to the mat. I might have to adjust my back foot. I check that my front knee is right over my heel. My torso is long, so some days, you know, I do need a little extra support under my hands. Pressing through all four corners of my front foot. My back leg is strong and straight. My spine is long. My heart and chest are open. My neck is a continuation of my spine. And my breath is flowing. Awesome. I'm going to bring my back knee down to the mat. I'm going to come down and have a seat. And that is a high runner's lunge for you. Some teachers call it different types of lunges. Some call it high lunge, um, some call it runner's lunge, sometimes it's just a lunge. It can be even a low lunge at times. To me, low lunge is the back knee on the mat, but there are variations of it. So as you know your yoga teacher, you'll know when they say what kind of lunge, you'll know what you're going to practice. If you're with me, a high lunge is uh, usually with the hands down on the mat or support. And then a crescent lunge is where we lift our torso up higher and typically have our arms up by our ears or some variation. So it just depends. And sometimes I change it up because that's what we do. So um, I hope you enjoyed this yoga short. I've done five yoga shorts for the month of July. If you have a pose that you'd like me to break down, give you alternatives, feel free to email me, comment below, find me on uh, social media and I'm happy to do that and these are just ways that I have come up with or that I know of or I've seen or I've taught so if you have other alternatives let me know I'd love to know about them it makes me a better teacher you can contact me at the real go fit girl at gmail.com I'm on Facebook and Twitter as go fit girl and Instagram as the real go fit girl I hope you have a lovely day and I hope to practice with you again soon thanks